Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, January 24th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Apple today had one of its usual surprise patch days that affect all of its operating systems. We got patches for watchOS, iOS, macOS or OS X and tvOS. For some older versions of OS X, there's also a separate Safari update. Out of the total of 19 vulnerabilities being addressed here, and I think that's actually a little bit on the smaller side as far as Apple patches go, 10 of the vulnerabilities do apply to all of the different products. Now of note here is probably that there is another patch for the meltdown vulnerability. Originally, Apple released an update for High Sierra on January 8th. Now, uh, this update did not cover the older version of the operating systems that are still being supported like Sierra and El Capitan. Well, with today's update, you will also get the meltdown patch for these older operating systems. Another interesting vulnerability that's being addressed here is what Apple calls the link presentation vulnerability. This vulnerability has already been exploited. I mentioned it here before. In order to exploit a vulnerability, an attacker would send you a link via iMessage that then leads to a web page that includes a malicious open craft hack. Now, you don't actually have to click on the link, just the preview within iMessage will cause the system to lock up. However, the vulnerability that I'm sort of most worried about are three vulnerabilities in WebKit. WebKit, of course, is the rendering engine behind Safari and could easily be exploited by a malicious web page. These particular vulnerabilities do allow arbitrary code execution. So this is a classic vulnerability that would be exploited by tricking you to go to a malicious website. Of course, just don't go to malicious websites and you will be fine if that would be so easy. Now, as far as counterindications go, within our Slack channel, uh, there were some reports that apparently these patches cause issues if you are running Carbon Black Response. And now, Carbon Black Response is uh, not really blocking anything, so shouldn't really have any issues here. But then again, we had issues like this uh, with uh, these meltdown patches. Carbon Black Response, I believe, does access memory in order uh, to sort of extract artifacts and such. But this particular product is different from Carbon Black Protect and Defense. Those two later products, uh, they often have issues with patches because they're whitelist solutions and they have to update their whitelists in order to accommodate uh, these new patches in some cases. So I do recommend patching. You don't have to rush it. So if you're running any Carbon Black product or any other security product for that matter, Make sure that you're testing these patches carefully. And the OpenSL project updated some of its policies, in particular, when and how patches will be released. Now, lately, OpenSL has always had a pre-announcement a few days before actual patches were released to get people ready. What's really had a major change is that patches will only be released on Tuesday in order to give people time throughout the week to actually apply and test these patches and not have to sacrifice weekends, as OpenSL puts it. However, it won't be like Microsoft that you will get sort of one patch Tuesday a month. Instead, what they'll be doing is the Tuesday before any patches are being released, there will be an announcement that the coming Tuesday patches will be released. In addition, OpenSL announced that version 1.1.1 will include TLS version 1.3. However, uh, this will be delayed until the standard is actually finalized. At this point, there is no final version of the TLS 1.3 standard. And I haven't talked about ransomware in a while. Apparently, there is a new strain that goes by the name of Rapid Ransomware. It does encrypt your files and adds the extension .rapid, which it sort of gave it its name. Now, what's sort of a little bit different here is that this ransomware also kills databases. Not really sure why. It does, of course, delete shadow copies and the like. 
and it does continue to run and wait for new files to be created after it is done encrypting all of your files. It's actually not that difficult to stop it if it's running on your system because the process calls itself rapid.exe. So pretty easy to spot that in a task manager. It doesn't try to hide using one of the sort of more common names. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.